Pembroke Welsh Corgi Top 10 Facts The Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a cattle herding dog that originated in Pembrokeshire, a Welsh country. The Welsh Corgi is one of two dog breeds. The other is the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, which is descended from a line of northern Spitz type dogs. Do you consider purchasing a Pembroke Welsh Corgi? In this video, you will learn everything about the top 10 facts about Pembroke Welsh Corgi, so you can find out if this dog is best for you. In the list of top 10 facts about Pembroke Welsh Corgi, at number 10 we have There are two distinct breeds of Corgis. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi are the two varieties of Welsh Corgis. Because they descended from different forebears, they are considered two distinct breeds. Crossbreeding in the 19th century resulted in this striking likeness. If you're trying to tell the two breeds apart, the Pembroke is the only one that doesn't have a tail. Cardigan Welsh Corgis have rounder ears on top of their tails, whilst Pembrokes have sharper ears. Next on the list at number 9, we have the Cardigan Welsh Corgis is the older breed. Around 1200 BCE, a warrior group of Celts transported the Corgi in its original form to Cardiganshire, Wales, indicating that Corgis have been present in Wales for almost 3000 years. The Teckel family of dogs, which included the Dashund, included this early breed. Next on the list, list at number 8, we have Pembroke Welsh Corgis have a considerable history as well. Although no one knows for sure, the Pembroke Welsh Koji is thought to have originated in 1107 CE when Flemish weavers relocated to Wales. The original Cardigan Koji's were crossed with a Spitz type dog to produce the Pembroke Welsh Koji's we know today. In 1925, the two breeds of Koji's were merged into one, causing a lot of confusion among breeders. Frequently, a judge would prefer one breed over another, resulting in dog show squabbles. In 1934, the breeds were given distinct status after nearly a decade of adorable conflict. Next on the list at number 7 we have The Kennel Club originally lumped the two breeds together. Pembrokes have a special affection for children, although their herding tendencies cause them to nibble at their feet or ankles. Pems on the other hand are quick learners and may be educated out of this habit at a young age. As with any breed, teach children how to approach and touch dogs, and constantly supervise any interaction between dogs and small children to avoid biting or ear or tail pulling on either party's side. Next on the list at number 6, we have Kojis were originally used as herders. As early as the 10th century, the Welsh used short dogs for as herders. There were no fences because pastures were considered communal land back then. Kojis would nibble at the leg of a farmer's cattle to herd them together and separate them from other herds. Kojis have easy access to the cow's ankles due to their near proximity to the ground, making them difficult targets for retaliatory cattle kicks. Next on the list at number 5 we have, according to Welsh legend, fairies ride them. The Koji is thought to be an enchanted dog, adored by fairies and elves. The supernatural creatures would employ the dogs at steeds in combat and to drive their carriages at night. The patterns on a Koji's coat are said to resemble the faint outline of a saddle and harness. Pembrokes were developed to be herding dogs and require a lot of exercise every day. However, as long as they receive the necessary physical stimulation, they make excellent apartment dogs. They should not be expected to jump up on the couch or any other small height because of their tiny legs and lengthy backs. Fractures are common. Pems can readily adjust to life in the country or in the city. Despite the fact that their coats are weather resistant and they thrive in most climes, they are very people oriented and should never be left alone in the backyard. Next on the list at number 4 we have The royal family loves the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. In her lifetime, Queen Elizabeth II has had more than 30 Corgis. Despite the fact that her last two Corgis, Whisperer and Willow, died recently, she still has two Dorgies named Candy and Vulcan. When King George VI brought a male Corgi home from a kennel in 1933, the Queen met her first Corgi. Dookie, the future Queen's dog, was an instant favourite with the sister Princess Margaret. The canine pair had a litter of puppies after adding a second Koji called Jane to the mix, two of which were kept. The collection of Kojis really took off once the Queen received another dog named Susan for her 18th birthday. Dorgis was created when some of the royal Kojis crossed with Princess Margaret's Dashian Pipkin. Next on the list at number 3 we have Kojis were used to predict Princess Charlotte's name. When Prince William and Kate Middleton were expected their second child in the spring of 2015, people were already placing bets on the name. Ladbrokes, a betting company, utilized Corgis to try to guess what the name would be. The company's commercial featured 10 Corgis wearing vests with various names in a contest to guess the child's name. The race was won by a Corgi named Alexandra. On May 2, 2015, Princess Charlotte was born. 
Next on the list at number two, we have suitable companions for older children. Pembrokes are still employed as working dogs, but they are now more commonly seen as domestic pets. They are recognized for being cheerful, caring, and intelligent, yet they can also be stubborn or independent. Although they are simple to teach and do not expect your Pembroke to be obedient, they enjoy being able to think for themselves. Food is a fantastic motivator for them when training, even though they desire to please their owners. Proceed with caution, Pembrokes are voracious eaters who can easily grow obese if the diet is not controlled. Pembrokes are also excellent watchdogs. Strangers can make them wary and they will bark if they believe something or someone is threatening their house and family. When they're young, the Pembroke needs to be exposed to a variety of people, sights, sounds and experiences just like any other dog. Socialization is important for your Pembroke puppy's development as a well-rounded dog. Finally, on the list at number one, we have needs plenty of grooming. Pembrokes are easy to groom, but if you don't brush them regularly, shedding can become an issue, especially during the shedding season. Brushing them on a daily basis is recommended when they are shedding the most. You simply need to bathe them as needed. However, many people find that bathing them on a regular basis helps them shed less. Brush your Pembrokes teeth at least twice or three times a week to get rid of tartar and the bacteria that live inside it. Brushing your teeth on a daily basis is even preferable if you want to avoid gum disease and foul breath. If your dog's nails don't wear down naturally, trim them once or twice a month to avoid unpleasant tears and other issues. They're too lengthy if you can hear them clicking on the floor. Because dog toenails include blood vessels, cutting them too short might result in bleeding and your dog may simply refuse to comply the next time the nail clippers are pulled out. Did you like this video? If so, it would be great if you subscribed to our channel so you do not miss new videos and learn more about dogs every day. And if you are interested in dog brain training and training methods, you should also check out the description. Thank you so much for watching.